PS. All right, so this guy has to stay up and running while you do that. So you save your file. I've got myself connected. I'm gonna turn the machine on. You might need to come on this side of the machine. So right now, this machine, because it is a duo machine, it is not in embroidery mode. Until you take it off, take this off, and you put your attachment on, this is what changes it to the embroidery mode. I've still got those other machines right away. It won't be once I get it on here. If you slide this on and listen when I do it, it's going to make a noise. And it's going to tell me. Oh. <laughs> it's going to tell me that I need to raise my carriage foot, and the embroider. This part's going to move and position itself. Oh neat! Nice. So now I also know that I do not have my embroidery foot on it. It has to have a special embroidery foot that goes on it, and it's all tangled in all these bobbin threads. Of course. Does but, your foot just clip on or do you have to unscrew no, it? No, I have to unscrew mine, whereas yours yours is a permanent part of your... I guess, I don't know if you can take yours off or not. I, yours I is know. a permanent part of yours because of the fact that um, yours is... Your PE 770 is, a, is an embroidery machine. Yeah. Whereas this is not an embroidery machine. I yeah, I don't know that a, I can change my foot. I gotta find my screwdriver to be able to change, to be able to put it on there. Not trip over here. It might be in the drawer. You think so? The second drawer. I think you had your kits in there. Where the tools are. Yeah. In one of the pouches. Didn't you, didn't you have one of the pan pouches in there? Yeah. Should have a screwdriver. There you go. This is not really the brother screwdriver, but I don't know what I've done with the brother it's, screwdriver. There's it's a machine a, screwdriver. Either there's one. a special brother screwdriver that's supposed to go to it. It's really fat and it fits between here. That's okay. We're just going to take either this way. off. It dropped already. It did, but you've got to get it to where you can. I always lift up my foot. To get it off and this is kind of wonky looking that's kind of crazy looking. it is crazy looking but you got to get it on just right so it goes on where this is attached to the foot and then this is there's a bar up underneath here that this has to go up on the bar that's what makes it stitch so i'm going to first put the first thing you want to do is the this and then once you get it on there you see that bar is above that bar right there Never had anyone be my videographer before. Yeah, right. And then you tighten this down. And I usually try to, whoops, what happened? That's not, I had it on there. There we go. Don't you wish you had more hands all the time? All the time. I usually try to do the videotaping where it's like me videotaping and holding it, trying to position oh, the camera. Okay, so when it goes down, it should rest right on top of that bar, which it does. Okay, so that is on. Still feels like it could screw some more because I have had it fall off in the middle of the stitching because all oh. of the vibration. That's oh not gosh. good. Okay, so now it's nice and tight. Okay. So, I also don't want to have yellow bobbin. And I have learned that this particular one, Can it... see the pen right here? It rests on the bar. It does not like um, to use a different color. When it stitches, yours does better than mine does. When it stitches, if I don't use the same colored bobbin... You can see the bobbin come through the top, which irritates me. Ugh. So, I always... Yeah, I don't like that either. I just go ahead and just use 
of course that's not the same color I'm doing. No, that's that's darker. the one I wanted and I didn't end up using it because I couldn't find that thread. I guess I probably could. I'm just going to use a lighter one just to make sure that it's not darker than my other one. I have one right there, but it's not enough. So, I don't like that one. Do you have an empty one? No, I just have another box of thread. I don't know if that's enough thread. I think it might be. That is the color. Let's go for it. Do it. That's the reason why I saved it. It's the leftover of a cone. It's only one word. Guess what? That doesn't go in there. That's why I don't think it goes in there either. All right. It should still work. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and get that same button. Now, the hooping is probably one of the most important parts of doing your embroidery. Okay? If you don't have it hooped right, you're going to mess up. So, when I'm going to hoop this one, I probably just stood right in front of you, didn't I? All right, I'm going to leave it like that. Let me go get the hoop. I'm going to use the, the one that came with the machine that is a 4 by 4 hoop. That's what you just did. Here. Yes. <laughs> Follow the these instructions. Follow yeah, these numbers. Awesome. Here. Okay. So, remember what I told you? I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and do I'm going to go ahead and do exactly what I told you to do. Okay. With the printing and the tracing. So, I'm going to print so for all those that missed the bobbin, that's what you did. Sorry. <laughs> um, let me open, 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 open. Right here, open. And then I'm going to send this to the printer and print the copy. I have learned that it, it's, it's just like the easiest thing ever to make sure you are successful um, with your embroidery is to print whatever you're going to embroider, put it on your item, and then trace it. Um, if you're gonna just wing it, trust me, I've winged, I've done that enough, and it doesn't always end where I want it to be. And then I'm, and then I'm not as satisfied as satisfied with my product now this is the size that i'm anticipating it going on this section right here let me see if that's even that might be even too big it is yeah so i'm too glad you printed I'm going it to pr now that i printed it i'm going to go ahead and even make it smaller than what i have because that's still too big so to keep it proportional i'm going to move it like that then I'm that gonna, was just from the corner, right? Mm -hmm, that was just from the corner, and then I'm going to center it again. I don't want it too much smaller, but that's only three inches wide. Let's see. Nope, my husband's calling. Of course. Sorry, bud. All right, let's print it again. I always only print one page because sometimes you get two or three pages with directions on it. And if you don't need the directions, you don't need to print it. So it's just a waste of paper. Okay, that's much better. So then I trim it down. And I place it on my item that I'm stitching. And you have a you have a place in the center that is a crossbar. So you can put your center point. You can put your center where your needle is, right there where that center crossbar is. 
and then it should trace it and that way you know whether or not it fits on your item and I can look at this and tell that it's gonna fit right where I want it to fit and it should stitch. Now, here's the catch. How am I going to hoop this? Right, that's what I've been wondering the okay. whole time. So, put it um, on the stabilizer. I'm going to show you what you're going what what you're going to do um, because you don't have the sticky stabilizer that I have. I have a couple different options that I would use. Hold on just a second. Where is it? So I have two different kinds of stabilizer that I would ordinarily use. Look at your phone so I can text him. Okay, so this is sticky stabilizer. Now, what you could do is this. This is only six inches wide. That I have smaller frames than this right here. But, so this even so wouldn't even fit this way. But you could put sticky stabilizer in it, and then this is going to stick to it. But I'm not going to do that. I don't want anything sticky on the inside of it because it's a drink holder. Right. So... I've got this tear away and it's junk. So it's it's kind of junk tear away paper and you can always just fold it over. You just have to have it to where you can hoop it. So I'm gonna do what they call hoop and then I'm going to float this on top of this stabilizer. So I really wanna get this off my computer so it's not, I'm not bearing weight on my keyboard and having to change what I'm looking at. So if I, I'm gonna flip it this way and you're gonna tear all of this away, so it really isn't gonna matter. So, but I, I, as you notice, I've stitched on it already, so it's not a completely good piece of stable stabilizer. But it will work for what I'm doing right now, if I can get it in the right position to where I can hoop it. So I'm gonna hoop it, just like this. Okay, remember it's supposed to be tight as a drum. Mm -hmm. And then this exit, tighten this down. Tighten your hoop down so it doesn't shift out of it. And then I'm just going to cut the excess of this off. Okay, now I'm going to place this in my hoop. And I know about right there is the center. Is that the right side up or the right well, side down this is really not neoprene uh-huh it's furry on the inside because it's really like the part of the velcro but i'm just going to use this because which so which you... side do you want outside or which side do you want inside well i'm trying to think which side should be on the outside this would feel better on your hands mm -hmm. it would probably look better too let's do it on that side then so you hoop the side up that is the pretty side yes pretty side up pretty side up pretty side up so this is how you float this i'm going to take and put a pin right here you want to make sure you get it in there straight because your work is only as good as what you do so above where you want your word yes and below where you want your word below where I want my word out of your sewing field yes now when you do those those headband pieces uh -huh. I I just pinned my finger to the I bottom saw that I'm like ow Are you all right yeah I'm all right it's just the top of my skin you know it's not the first time I've ever stitched myself okay so I this is where I want this to go okay 
So I am ready, except for my needle is not threaded. Mine goes on a little bit different than yours. Remember how yours has the reverse of this? Your buttons are on this part of yours. My buttons are on the poop. Okay. Okay? Dad just saw me say poop. I did. All right, so that's where I want it to be. And as soon as I can get my needle threaded, then I'll send the file, because I still don't have the file sent. And that's where you're following these numbers. And these numbers. And you always pull that from the back when you thread because it goes in, but it leaves a loop. And if you pull from the front, you just pulled your thread right out of the needle. Okay, so that is in. And now this part of the machine right here is what transfers the file. These are onboard ones. These are when you like tell you some settings. And this is if you wanted to actually save something onto the computer. I never save anything onto the computer. Uh, onto the machine. I keep it free and I just use this. But yours has, it's the same symbol, but yours has the USB card that you, or USB that yeah. you put into it, the flash drive that you put into it, whereas mine has to have a cord to hook to it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm not going to push that yet because out on my computer, it actually already came up and I, I dismissed it. I want to, I'm going to, um, I am going to, what I want to do is I'm going to disconnect and reconnect because I want you to see what happens on the computer, okay? So when you first put this on, okay, so it's just like that. So right now I'm going to plug it back in. Now look at the computer. Your The folder or the drive is going to pop up on your computer, supposed to. Well, I guess not. Nope. No, that's not it. So it's in it's in your on your desk. It should be in the drive the different drives that you have for the computer. There it is, right there. US there. It was just slow popping up, but it eventually popped up. <laughs> so you can see there's nothing in there. So it cannot transfer anything until you bring this over here. You always save it as a PES file. That's what brother reads is PES. Okay. So I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to save it on there. And it shows that it is a PES file. And now when I go push this button, there it is. If you've made it too big for your sewing field mm -hmm. for the stitching field it will not upload oh okay so that's how you know whether or not you've made it too big it's like you know you get frustrated it's like where's the file i know i've saved it blah 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 and oh. it's because your file's too big for the sewing field your sewing field is a five by seven mine is only a four by four okay so i know mine i know it will fit in my sewing field because it uploaded and then from this point you take and you Click on it, and you click the envelope, telling it to bring it up, and now it put it in there. So now I can adjust where I want it to be, and um, you click layout. Oh, I forgot there's one, one, one important thing. See this little button right here with the needle on it? Mm -hmm. Yours should have a needle with a plus and minus on it. Let's say you were stitching along and something messed up or whatever, and you wanted to go back some stitches, that's how you would do that. You can go, you can so back it up. You hit your pause button and then you can back it up. Yes, you can back it up and go back and restitch where you've pause messed up. And then back it up. Yeah. And I don't know that you can really see it because there's no stitches. Well, there you can change, you can go back threads, you can go forward a thread, you can go minus stitches, you can go plus stitches. So that's that. Now I don't want to be right there, so I'm going to go back and hit the, the hit the back button to the return because I want to go to layout. So when I go to layout, it's very similar to what yours is. Um, when I go to layout, I want wherever this needle is. This is the center point already. 
but um, so I'm going to make sure that this is centered right there and it looks like it is centered. So I'm going to click my button and let it, my finger trace might be, on, I want to trace out my area. Um, so the little, little running arrows, the ru running line with the arrow on it is the trace. So it's going to stitch exactly where I want it to stitch. That's, that's your test to make sure that that's going to yes. be right. Yes, yes. And you can also use those um, marking pens that I told you that you can like mark your items or whatever. Um, you could do that as well. Now, um, something about this, I could go and put something, a top, what they call as a water soluble topper on top of it. And, and I always do that whenever I stitch terry cloth or fleece or minky because your stitches will just drop right down into the fabric. It might do this right now, but I got plenty of this. I can just make another one if it does. And that, that uh, dissolves away when you wash it, right? I don't ever wash it off. Okay. It's it's nasty. It's like having, it's, as soon as you get it wet, it's like snot the paper glue. Paper mache. No, it's like snot glue all yeah. over your item. Yeah, paper mache is a good example. Yeah. Um, so I've got some, I've got some other tricks that I can teach you later on another to video get to get it back off. Um, most of the time I rip it off dry. Oh, okay. I just rip it off dry and then there are other tricks to get it off. Okay. So this little stringy right here is going to get on my nerves because it's going to be in there as soon as it starts stitching, it's going to be on there and I'm not going to want it to be on there. So I will pause it, but I've put the foot down. I just wanted you to see that. When I, as long as the foot is up, it's red. Right. As soon as I put the foot down, the light turns green. That means it is ready to stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna push the button. And once it gets a couple of stitches, not a lot, just get enough in it to where you know it's not gonna pull back out. Then I come in here and I try to get this stitch out. And of course, I don't probably, it went right there. And these are where those, if you have not already ordered these, let me, hold on just a second. Where did you get them from? This is Blade. Um, I know you can buy them on Amazon. I could have bought it from All Stitch. I'm not really sure, but um, I know Amazon sells them. These but they're duck, duck build. Duck build. But they're just, they're just so smooth. You can hear how smooth they are to snip. Yeah. And I mean, they're they're just the best scissors ever. All right, so now that I'm done, I'll put my foot back down. I'm going to get the green light again. And then I'm going to push the green light, and it will continue to stitch. It goes fast. Not near as fast as my 15 needle. It'll take a little bit to get it done. But I love this font because it has all these little curlies on your first capital, your first letter. You can also put them on the end, but I didn't bother to do that because it, it will make your file bigger and then you have to compensate your stitching with your sewing field. You have to compensate that sewing field because it takes up part of your sewing field. I do have to watch my thread because it's not really on that. You know what? Because I'm missing something here for whatever reason. Yeah, you don't have another little peg. I don't. And I don't know why I don't, but guess what? I really don't need it. I know why I never did this because it always gets up on this. It get, wants to get tangled. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's gonna get, it's gonna stick it. No, it's not. Yep, it is. All right, so here's the way to get rid of that. Don't put it up on this hook. Just put it up here and let it feed from the back. 
I don't know, it still might do it. That's probably why I've never liked this particular one and I ordered that other one that I gave you. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't want to spool off correctly. I'll just watch it. All because I don't have a jar big enough to fit it. And I broke the actual part on the top that you would put a thread holder on it. It's just gonna make a lot of noise, isn't it? That's funny. I think I'm better off just not having any of it on there. That drive me, it's driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what? Use a dowel rod. No, this is this will work. Yeah, that's wide mouth. It just has to be wide enough to where it won't walk all over. There we go. And this is the reason why I have it sitting, just so it doesn't get tangled. And it's feeding. Here we go. We're in business. See what happens when you break your machine. And I don't really know how to even replace that part if I wanted to replace that part. I wonder if they have replacement. I don't know, but I, I don't even know if I know how to get it out to undo it. Oh, there is a button up underneath that I could probably push to get it out. I see it now, right here. Yeah, there's something metal. Yeah, it was right up underneath there. Maybe I should order me a replacement part. Until you sat there and did that. I never saw that part where you could. Yeah, there's definitely a metal clip or something. Yeah, there is. So I guess you're not the first person to break that piece. Mom. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Isn't that a pretty S? That's cute. Lots of projects that you can do, even just having a four by four, because that's what I stitched on most of the time. And I managed to do your tree skirt on yeah. this. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. The one thing I don't like about this machine and your machine too, is that my machine will cut the thread, but you do not want that to stitch all over that. So clip it out and go ahead, especially like that, because that that will you will play havoc trying to get that stitch out if it stitches that letter all over top of it. Yeah. And it won't be clean. So it's okay. You're you gotta babysit these machines, watch what you're doing. You can't just like set them and go with the one that automatically cuts it and trims it. And then you watch this so that you can make sure that um, you can get those that clean look. That's why you would want to clip it. And there's also a sound that I know they make that when you've got a jam or something like that. The stink jam a sound. Distinct jam sound. I did one that I had, even that machine, there's a sound. It's just like, you know, when you're cooking and you're frying something and, and all of a sudden, over. yeah, all of a sudden you, you hear this one sound when it starts, when it starts frying a certain way and I've got to let it move out of the way so I can get that other part. Yeah. I know it seems a little bit extra, but the overall finished product will look a lot prettier if you take that time and do that. But yeah, it has distinct sounds that it will make if it messes up. 
this is the normal sound. And once it's stitched for a while and you hear that normal sound, then you'll know the wrong sound. The wrong sound. <laughs> and sometimes what happens is, you know, same thing with sewing. You know how sometimes... Oh, when you, you get forget, everything jammed in the bottom and it goes... Dun, 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 dun. Well, you get... That's what they call oh. a bird's nest. Yeah. And all of your bobbin thread just like... Yes. Got on the bottom of it. Ah. You're going to be... When you're sewing I on a... I that. I know, but when you're sewing on a sewing machine, it is guaranteed to do it when you put... When you forget to put your foot down. Yes. Yes. But this one... I made that in my last YouTube right. video. This one... When you don't, this one doesn't have anything to do with putting your foot down. I said, this is troubleshooting when you forget to put your foot down. Well, this one, this one doesn't, it, this one will do that when it starts stitching wrong. It has nothing to do with whether your foot is down. That was my last video to Lisa. It was how to get out of the bird's nest when you forget to put your foot down. <laughs> well... I literally try to pull it up as part. These and you ones, just clip away. Right. But these click, right here clip, will clip. help you clip away without clipping your And hemostats. I use hemostats to get all that yes. crap out of there. And remember what the one lesson, the um, sewing lesson that Wanda gave me. Don't be afraid to throw something away. Because you'll probably throw a lot of stuff away. And I have. I probably have jobs over there that I have just didn't throw away. I just leave them over there as my reminders. Okay, that right there, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, but boom, 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 boom. But it's okay. That does sound like a sewing machine. Not right stitch. It sounds like you ran out of thread somewhere or something. I didn't, but I think what it is is that remember how I have hung up. No, remember how I have a double layer of Stabilizer oh, on yeah, one it's side. Thicker. It's thicker. I think that's why you're hearing that. But it's still stitching, so it's good. That's a bad sound, too. Well, whenever it goes over top of where stitches have already been laid, it'll make that sound. And sometimes my bobbin wants to pull up because it's like it really is struggling. So I will like help it out. All right. That one right there. Do you see that? That would, you would almost not get that out in that curl of that eye. So it is worth stopping it and getting that out of the way. Because otherwise that's going to be stitched in there almost forever. Remember how hard it was to get them off of the bag tag? Mm -hmm. And that's the last letter. It's got to go up and put the I, the dot on the I. And the dot between the I and the stitch, it's on the, it's, some people just don't even worry about them. Because it's like so insignificant with the stitches that you don't even know. All right, so it is complete. And there's mine. That's the only time it cuts it at the very end. Cute. All right, so we're gonna take it off. literally just like peel it off tear it away tear it away that's why it's called tear away and I did do double layers but so all those stitches that I cut mm -hmm. from the front those are all the stitches on the back you don't really need them as all of them off the way but one of the things that I learned when you do embroidery um, it's important to clean up the back of your item before you give it away because, you know, somebody's eventually going to look on the back of it and it, some people can make them look, they're pretty sloppy looking. And so I just try to, if it's tear away, like right there, I'm not going to try to tear all of that out. But the bigger pieces, 
I do go ahead and try to tear it out. If it were cut away, you'd just be leaving all of that. You would only cut the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So that's as good as I'm going to get it right now. Now, to make the koozie or the drink holder, this is where I saw on YouTube yesterday when I was watching it, is that they literally just take and choose one of these. So I'm gonna finish okay, and I'm done with my embroidery part. Now I wanna stitch this together. I'm jumping ahead of myself. That's when you have to switch back your machine. Yes, so now there's a little latch up underneath here with mine, so you would just have to go to your other sewing machine. Uh -huh. Whereas I can take that apart and um, you can. So did you already make another pattern before you do this? I have a, I have a, a pattern real, pattern. A pattern pattern. I have a pattern pattern because you're going to cut your pattern on the fold. So I cut that on the fold mm -hmm. so that you're only cutting one side. But I do need to change my foot. I guess I don't need to change my foot. I wonder if I have to change my foot. I don't know. Do I do you have, have to, to make it a presser foot? foot? Yeah, I have to change it though. I've often wondered if I could just leave it there because I want to use some other stitches like a freehand. But what I saw on the machine on the video making these little koozies is that they choose a really wide zigzag stitch. Now, those are all of my stitches for this machine. I'm going to want... And I don't know why they're not on the right number, but that is, unless I'm on the wrong one. Okay, but look, I'm just gonna show you this. One, two, three, four, five. It's even numbered, number five. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll just count it. Maybe I was off when I had it on the other screen. Okay, so I want this one right here. I want that zigzag stitch, I think. Or do I want seven? Before I do it, I'm gonna practice on something else just to make sure that's the stitch that I want. Because remember, that is how you end up throwing stuff away if you don't bother to check it out. So that's what I was going to tell you that I did. I took an extra piece of that satin and I went through on my brother sewing machine mm -hmm. and I went through each one of the stitches that I have on my machine. So that you did a little, and a little I, test? Yeah, I put a test stitch on the satin so I could see what it would do to the satin right. with each one of my stitches. So now I know on the satin what each stitch looks like. Oh, that's cool. That was a good idea. Thanks. All right, I don't really have. And then I've got plenty of that satin left for testing. So I want to. Because I keep scraps. I have a scrap um, box I, up in I, my. That's what all of that is. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. there's just scraps and I don't throw it away. I mean, I'm going to use a scrap this big. So I want to position this to where I want it. And when you can adjust your stitch right here, that's how wide your stitch is and that's gonna be your length. So I want to go over here and I wanna make this the biggest length that it'll go. So it's, maybe that might even be too big. All right, and I'm going to- You're hooking the table. Yeah, I'd be all right. I just need to have a foot. All right, so it's not wide enough. And they really want you to sew off the edge of it. If I sewed off the edge of it enough, but there, this is probably not even wide enough. So they have you do that on the inside 
That way, if it pulls through, well, that you, it's it's kind of like a serger if you don't have a serger. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be on the inside. And if it pulls through, if it stretches, that's what you're going to see on the outside. Or either you could just sew it straight down. You don't even have to sew it a zigzag. But the one I saw was to have like a decorative stitch. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to sew it straight down. And I'm going to just go back off of here and go back up to number one. Make sure I've got both sides underneath here. I want my needle in the middle. At least these machines tell you that your foot's not down because it won't let you go. Right. the reverse button and I don't want I don't want a big stitch and as you notice that's coming up underneath there it'll be all right it's still did you get the edges yeah I did. both edges I did that's probably the beauty of the zigzag stitch because you know you're going to get both edges yeah but when you open it it's going to be not seen and of course, I didn't really line that up very well, did I? But guess what? It's not finished on the edges and it won't ravel. So you can just cut it again. So I'll just cut you a bunch like the fabric and you can go home and come with the pattern with the pattern because yeah. I made you a pattern. Okay. All right, so now of course that looks dorky, doesn't it? Because it's not lined up, but cute. Because this won't ravel. It should be just fine, finished the way it is. All right, ready for the reveal? Oh my gosh, I love it. It doesn't feel like it's as wide as this one is. Let's see if it works. Ready? This is the test. Does it work? Or is it too skinny? Or is it too skinny? That's why I said I have not made this pattern. It probably would have been helpful if I had not filled it with water first. <laughs> it might work better on a water bottle, but I don't think it's big enough for yeah. the 12 ounce cup. I do want to test it on something though. What about this water bottle? Yeah, we might have to continue We're gonna make working your on pattern. this one. We're going to make your pattern bigger. But yeah. at least I know the pattern works, and it is. So this was a test for me. That's why we didn't do any of yours, and you're going to go home, and you're going to test it out. So the, And you saw it was bare minimal yeah. that we used. So we need to have that at least, I would say, It needs to be at least a half an inch to compensate. Yeah. Bigger. So let's go make the pattern bigger. Okay. All right. Successful koozie. The only thing is, this is not going to fit anything but maybe a water bottle. I won't throw it away because I still can think I can use it on my water bottle, like a plastic water bottle. Yeah. So. All right, guys. All right. Bye. Thanks for watching.